Hey guys, John Faulkner here with Survival Dispatch, and today I'm joined by Charlie Hogwood. And, uh, you know, we get so many questions coming in here all the time. We try to break them down into certain videos. Um, but one of the things is really breaking down the the areas, the categories mm -hmm. of survival, because right. it's such a huge... Yeah, what does survival mean? In a global aspect, it's so huge that yeah. a lot of people get trapped on exactly what and where and when and why and things like that. So. So in, in, in this video, we're going to break down the nine areas of survival. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that, that Charlie has come up with, and it's to help people um, have a roadmap, mm -hmm. pretty much, you know? Yeah. I, as long as you got these areas it, covered. It, like what I was saying, if you, if you know these nine areas of survival, if, just write this list down. Everything else that you do has to follow into these. Will fall into one of these. This yeah. will cover every single area of your survival. Yeah. So well, people will say, well, I forget what to put in a bug out bag. These things. Right. Well, I forget what I need to prepare for at home. These things. Right. I forget what I'm supposed to do at my retreat, my car kit. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. In my bug out location. In my location. Yep. It do, if I'm going camping, what do I need? Right. I need these things. Right. That's it. And as long as you've addressed each of these things, you should no, be. You're, you're well on your way yeah. to being squared away. And, and what we're going to do is, is we're going to go over the categories. It's not going to be like, these are the 35 things that you need in this category, and these are the that's, 18 yeah, things you much. need in this category. Yeah. Uh, because different different circumstances, different people, different lifestyles, skill, different locations, skill different skill levels mm -hmm. will determine those items that are within mm -hmm. these categories. As well as your ability to buy stuff and right. spend time training and right. everything else. Yeah. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, you could have one. I mean, we talk about communication all the time. Yeah. and and. One person might be able to say it's really simple. You just buy four sat phones, one for every single person in your family, right. and you always yeah. have comms. That's right. But it's not realistic for the other person uh, right. or anybody else. So, so these are the categories we're going to go over. Starting with, and these are in no like chronological order. Start at the top and go to the bottom. Um, but these are the nine that you really have to focus on. So, if you want, like Charlie said, get a pen and paper out. Um, you know, write these down, and then really start to examine where um, your strengths and your weaknesses mm -hmm. fall within these nine categories. So, the mm -hmm. first one, talk about all the time food food yeah and not in any order of importance it's right. just just the way that they came out on the list yeah. uh, because all of these items are all equally important yeah. some a little bit more than others like transportation could be less but so food um we, how long can we go without food it all determines on what you're are, are gonna, are we gonna go back to that, that rule of uh, threes, which is, you know. Uh, you know, and, and I and I think that that's it's it's a horrible thing to live by. It is um, you know, just because Jesus went into the wilderness for four, you ain't Jesus. Um, so don't think that you're going to bug out and be fine with no food for three or four weeks. It's, right. it's, it's not going to happen. You, you start but getting sugar shakes after about two hours. You get hangry, <laughs> you get hangry at your you know. cubicle after, you know, 30 minutes after noon because yeah. you haven't gone to lunch yet. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so, but food, food is extremely important. Yeah. It's the calories that keep the engine going. So, so how would we look at food in relation to general preparedness? Mm -hmm. If I'm building a bug out bag, my food in there is going to be something that I probably want to be a little bit more shelf stable. Yep. Something easy to prepare. Less right? of, less susceptible to temperature. That's right. Something that, you know, well, that's part of the shelf stable is life. Right. Think, think of right. lifeboat. Uh, because if I left an MRE in the trunk of my car, it is going to be no good mm -hmm. in, you know, in a, in a couple months mm -hmm. at the most. So, uh, especially down here in the heat. Yeah. I'm back in the mountains. A little, less, but a little bit longer. So, uh, so food, if I'm at the house and I'm preparing for food, my food storage plan now will, I, I actually em employ a tiered food storage program. Something else I came up with is like all my, you know, I might have all my canned food. Mm -hmm. uh, I might have all my regular everyday food. Yep. I just stock a normal pantry. Yep. Then I have my, uh, my garden and then I'll have the, what I call nature's refrigerator. So that'll be animals on the hoof. I might have live rabbits. I might have goats. I might have you know Pigs, whatever. Kittens, what, yeah, whatever, whatever it is, is, because if it's if it's still moving and breathing under its own power, I don't have to refrigerate it. Right. So so food in a in a house situation, a food storage program, is different than what might be food in your bunker, your mm -hmm. basement, your car, mm -hmm. your get home bag, that kind of thing. So yeah. just address food to that mission specific, and then you'll be okay. And plan around that for the number of people yep. that you have the calorie requirements that you have, you know, so like as a minimum, 1200 calories if you're sitting under a shade tree. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, if you're running and gunning, you could be five, six, seven thousand calories a day. Yep. So don't underestimate the amount of calories that you need, but not just empty calories. 
we need to have balanced calories. We need to have our, our carbohydrates. We need to have our proteins, right? And, and none of these bucket meals and stuff seem to address fiber. Right. Right? Because then, it's hard to keep it. it. Yeah, it's harder to keep it stable. It, right, for it's not shelf, shelf stable, yep. and then the, and to keep them more affordable, mm -hmm. what do they leave out? Protein. So they make them really carb intensive, yep. and so a lot of empty carbs, not complex carbs. You do want complex carbs because that gives you the the consistent energy throughout yep. the day. So you know you might get TVP, which is a texturized vegetable protein. So when you start looking at at food storage. I'm not a fan of buying all the bucket meals. I hate those things. They don't serve a purpose, and, and you're going to buy all these bucket meals and all these you know packet foods like that, and you're never going to say to your wife, "Hey, honey, you know we're getting close to the end of the shelf life of this you know this bucket of food. Why don't we start rotating it into our diet?" Right. What is she going to say? And what, you're going to end up throwing it out to the street or selling it on eBay because mm -hmm. it's close to the end of its shelf life. Yeah, and, and, it, and it happens all the time, you know, and that's where, like Charlie said, the food portion of it, uh, it's going to scale to, to whatever the uh, outcome you, you need to, to have yeah. it based on right. how many people, what are you doing with it, and, uh, and really what part of your preps it's fitting in. Yeah, you like know? in dietary requirements. If right. you have small children, that's a, that might be different kinds of food. Because you have to mind appetite fatigue, which is a real thing, mm -hmm. right? You got to look at dietary requirements. Does anybody have celiac disease? Do you have gluten issues? Right. To, you know, so all of those kind of things need to be taken into consideration for your family. Yeah, and so that's why we start. You know, just food at the top. Uh, it's not number one. It's just our first one. So moving on, number two, water, agua. Water. Yes, the the elixir of life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, right next to whiskey, which oh, I live a higher on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they go well together. They you do, know? yeah, a little uh, bit, yeah, it, kinda, it, it opens it up. You know, but, um, but water. Water is, is it's definitely needed. It, I mean, absolutely. It's needed every day. It uh, is needed. We're and made it's, it's, 70% of water-ish. Well, 60. 60? 63. 63. Whatever. <laughs> Some drink more water than if others. If we're going to be accurate. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but, but we also need several kinds of water. Right. Not every drop of water we use in in a we say survival environment, but when the when the power goes off, not every drop of water has to be medical quality. Mm -hmm. So the water that you flush the toilet with can be you know a, a rain bucket or a ditch water in a bucket you just pour down a toilet and it flushes it. That doesn't yeah. matter. The water that you wash your clothes with doesn't have to be purified. Right. The water that you drink, that you clean wounds with that you cook with, that water should be better prepared. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, and then the amount of water every day, that's a big thing. Now, under your water, do you include filters and ways to process water and things like that? Or is it just um, the amount of water it's a that really needs to be looked at? I actually look at it as a water plan. Okay. So a water plan is, where am I gonna get my water? Do I have multiple sources to get water? Mm -hmm. The water I get needs to be prepared. So without getting into full on water purification, I know that I need to filter it and then I need to treat it. I can I have to filter out chemicals because I can't boil it. Yeah. I need to, you know, I can filter out pathogens. So if I have a really nice Berkey filter, I just pour it in there and let it go. Cause that's gonna take out heavy metals, it's gonna take out pathogens, it's gonna take out, you know, whatever I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna pour in there. Uh, so if it's if I got clean water and I don't need to filter it, I can probably get away with just boiling it. Uh -huh. You know, cryptosporidia, you know, giardia, yep. all of those kind of things. So I can I can actually pasteurize my water by cooking it to 152 degrees. You know, if you get a wappy, yeah. you know, let it let it do its thing. And yeah, it'll kill itself. Yep. You know, and and that's the biggest thing too is is and once again it, it's this is based on what you're needing at home is a whole mm. lot different than in a bag. Yep. Um, you know, but but also knowing circumstances I would say of if it's a if it's a spring that you might have on your property, does that spring always produce water mm -hmm. or only certain times? If it's a river, does it go dry during droughts? Or mm -hmm. if it's a creek, does it yeah, go that'd dry? Yeah, that'd be inconvenient. Oh, I'm all ready for my survival situation. Right. Power goes out for months and, oh wait, my creek dried up. My creek is dried up also. <laughs> and, and so. you know, and there's places out west where snow runoff mm -hmm. makes creeks throughout the winter, yeah. you know, f after winter. Mm -hmm. But during the summer, it's just a dry creek bed. Yeah. That, so that's it. You, if you so know multiple ways to collect water, whether it's from a water source 
or from a gypsy well along a creek, which is just really going back a few feet off the side of a bank, dig a hole, let the water fill up. That water will be sand filtered from mm -hmm. the creek water, so it, it will be at least a, an order or two cleaner than that, even at, not perfect, but yeah. better. Yeah. So choose your water. So multiple sources, multiple ways to prepare it, but don't go straight to the rubbing sticks thing like people always do. Mm -hmm. Get a filter. Get a quality filter. Get a filter that's big enough for the family to work with. Yep. So, and I tell people if it's a if it's a bug out thing, make sure it's a filter that fits the group that you're planning on bugging out with. Yeah. You know, don't get a life straw and yeah. say it's good for you and yeah, your wife and yeah, three and kids. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, and then you, yeah, um, that, so, that, that gets old. So, <laughs> so water is number two. Number three, shelter. Yep, and shelter is everything. So, so think more broadly when it comes to things like shelter. Shelter includes your clothes. Clothes. Shelter includes your your poncho, yep. your rain jacket, your outer jacket, your layers of yep. of clothing for for cold weather, or the you know the less layers for warm weather, and and be. So if you're thinking clothing, now think about your climate. Am I in a hot climate? Does my climate change? Do I have four seasons? Do I have two seasons? you know, rotate that stuff out of whichever kit yeah. you have. But then start thinking about shelter, okay, uh, tents, yep. rain tarps, you know, for yep. camping and stuff like that. But now let's get out of the woods and start thinking about the house. Yep. If my shelter is my home, do I have spare nails and hammers? Do I have a couple sheets of plywood? Some you tarps. Know, you know, do I have some tarps to mm -hmm. fix the leaks? If a window blows out or, or a window breaks, can I, can I improve my shelter that mm -hmm. way? And, uh, you know, shameless plug on this month's uh, uh, Survival Dispatch Insider for the fort, the kids section. We actually have an exercise where kids use a cotton bed sheet to make a tent. Nice. And you can use a cotton bed sheet, not a blanket, but a cotton bed sheet will actually make a waterproof shelter as long as you don't touch the spot inside because that'll create a drip over your sleeping partner and then they, you know. But read up on uh, this month's uh, Survival Dispatch Insider on germ warfare and you'll see it. Yeah, and, and you know, and I think that's where uh, make sure that when you're going through these nine, you're going broad enough. Mm -hmm. Like Charlie said your at categories. the beginning, your category, you know, and make, but make sure you're going broad enough with regards to at home, vehicle, on the road, at your bug out location, mm -hmm. and really start to break them down. And what I like to do is, is put those four or five cat within mm -hmm. each of these and then define exactly where you are yeah. with What does each that of mean them. to you? Right. And for you as far as material, as investment, you as in skill level, mm -hmm. you as in not just you, but your family, your wife or your children or your yeah. husband. You know, we have a lot of ladies that watch this stuff mm -hmm. and they're taking care of this stuff and their husband's like, I don't need all that. And they are responsible. And, and I think that's the biggest thing with the importance of this is it's unique to every person. Charlie drives a bigger truck than I do, so his truck can carry more stuff than mine can. Charlie has more kids than I do, <laughs> so I can carry less stuff or more stuff per person, per person. than sure. Charlie can. So I can't just take Charlie's list, slide it over here, yeah. because then what I'm gonna learn is, well, Charlie said he put all this stuff in his truck, but that doesn't mm -hmm. fit in my SU. And you Wait. probably don't need a case of diapers. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. So, oh, I'm so, so glad I'm out of that <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Oh. So, but yeah, you so, but that's but that's actually a good point. Yep. Diapers are, you know, that falls under clothing which falls under shelter. Mm -hmm. And you can't overlook that kind of thing. For any of us that have diapers, you know, kids in diapers, I changed 5 diapers on my little boy before breakfast the other day. Okay? That I mean we're blowing through those yep. things. So, you got to stock up on that. Luckily, Luckily, Mama is really good with <laughs> with finding all of the, with the, the deals. And she's a coupon. Ah, she she makes Target regret so, their programs. <laughs> um, so that's so that's the first three: food, water, shelter, and then um, and like I said, these are in no order, but we we lump two together here: safety and health. Yes. So kind of go hand in hand. So explain that. Well, the reason I put safety and health in the same category is. If, if, you, if you're not safe or, and you or find yourself in unsafe situations, you can affect your health. If you're sick, that's still a health issue. Mm -hmm. So if you cut yourself because you're not paying attention or you shoot somebody when you're you know, not handling your firearm correctly, that's a safety. So safety and health do go right. hand in hand. And it's, that's one of the most critical pieces. I, I mean, if you get injured, you have complicated your situation yes. in daily life yes. and even more so in a situation now where people are counting on you. Because not only are you injured, now you're using up all your supplies and one good bleeder can blow through a lot of gauze. A lot of gauze. A lot of supplies. 
And if you're if you have limited supplies, that's you know that's your and, trouble. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of times, usually when you have one man down, it means you have two men down because mm -hmm. another one has to look over that one. Mm -hmm. Or um, you could have four or five people down if they're carrying one person. Right, right. In the in the military, you know, you're not always teaching to to kill. You're maiming because that takes not just that fighter out; it takes the rest of the the mm -hmm. unit out trying to to recover that person. And how can people go about, with regards to health, are you breaking it down the same exact way? Yeah, so health includes hygiene, mm -hmm. uh, which is teeth brushing, hand washing, you know, it, it also clean includes- Clean work, it, clean cooking areas yeah, and things in, like that. In germ warfare, mm -hmm. this, this month's issue, we talk about food prep cross-contamination, we talk about handling raw foods, we talk about hunting, hunt butchering with, you know, with your hands and an animal out in the woods. Mm -hmm. You don't have a lot of running water to clean yourself up for that. So, so hygiene is is a critical part of that. But we also talk about where are we burying the bodies. We're talking about where are we going number one and number two. Mm -hmm. That that's all part of health. And health falls uh, not just in fixing boo boos and injuries. It's it's health management. Are all of our people changing their socks? Are, you know, are we visually watching people drink water because they say, oh, I'm fine. Next thing you know, they're on their back because they, right. uh, they, they thought they were better than they were. So are we looking at the feet to make sure we don't have blisters and trench foot? Are we looking to make sure that people are actually brushing their teeth so that we're not dealing with a dental issue? Yeah. Dental is the number two reason why military forces can't get deployed. It's a huge issue. You've got to have floss and teeth brushes. You got to have, uh, well, it, in Tennessee, it's all the teeth brush, <laughs> or toothbrush <laughs> for all of our Tennessee folks. Hey, I'm in North Georgia. So, but you got to have your toothpaste. You got to have all those kind of things, baby wipes, just something to keep you going. Yeah. And uh, some dental tools are really handy. So a dental kit is a super handy thing to have. Um, and then learn how to use that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be like uh, Tom Hanks, Banging a tooth out on the side well, of a, a yeah skate. Mm, mm, yeah. What was that? An ice skate? <laughs> uh, ice skate and a rock. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So. You definitely don't want to be that guy. And and you know and being safe. Is a safety briefing. Yeah. When I do when I do uh, contingency plans and plan preparedness plans for groups and families, I actually talk about performing a safety briefing. So you think oh I don't need people will say I need to be less formal. In, in that kind of an environment, that's not the case at all. You need to be more formal a lot of times mm -hmm. because you've got to give people, they've got to you know, understand what's expected of them. They got to be told, hey, let's be safe. Let's don't get all accidental with chainsaws and axes now yeah. just because there's a hurricane. Let's, you know, because those injuries are gonna be a problem. So if you say, all right, here's today, this is what we're doing for today. Today we're clearing trees because we had a hurricane. We're gonna be working with chainsaws. Let's make sure we got our gloves and all of our safety yeah. equipment. Let's make sure we're not swinging axes on people. Uh, let's not, you know, muzzle sweep everybody around us when we go to the range. So just take a moment to reinforce that. That's all safety and health. That OSHA crap just follows you. Ever. I know, and OSHA, man, they just hurt. So, yeah. mm. all right, so that's safety and health. Uh, next, security. Security, yeah, it kind of speaks for itself. Security is, uh, you know, a layered uh, approach. Layered approaches yep. to defense, yep. and so security can be uh, offensive and defensive. Correct. Right. So when it comes to security, you've got to plan for your security. If you cannot secure yourself and all of your hard-earned preps and supplies, you are only holding them long enough until somebody else comes along who wants to challenge you right. and take them. So it doesn't matter if you've got you know tons of gold and you know food, if you don't have the ability, the ability, yep. and the equipment to protect it, then yeah. you know that's a weakness. Yeah, and you know, and a lot of people, I think a lot of times you know they, they get stuck on this one. Mm -hmm. They get stuck on security um, because it takes it takes more than owning an AR. Oh yeah, it does. It takes more. Mm -hmm. It takes more than that. Mm -hmm. It takes skill. It takes training. It takes knowledge. At times, it even takes some luck. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to realize we we have Navy SEALs and Army Rangers that get their lives taken mm -hmm. by ten-year-old kids wearing flip-flops mm -hmm. with an AK overseas that doesn't even have a dust cover on it. You yeah. know, just. It happens. Yeah. Um, I've always told. I've always. I've always said that I don't care how much battle rattle you're wearing and what your. You know what your fancy gun systems are. You know if my my daughter can take you shoot you in the ear yeah. with a 22, it still takes you out of the fight. Yeah. You know. 
And and you know, and security has to be a, a very layered approach. Yes. Like you said. Mm -hmm. um, because not all security is going to be viewed the same. I mean, some will be passive with, with alarms. Passive security, and active security. And yeah. active are a whole, yes. two completely separate categories. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, a big difference between a perimeter alarm system that mm -hmm. you set up or walking a perimeter. Right. Well, yeah, we call it aggressive patrolling. So right. in the Army, I was a scout. My job was to go watch you to see what you were doing and sit there for maybe 24 hours and just watch and take notes of what you're, what you're all doing mm -hmm. because that creates the information to create a battle plan. So if, in, if, if you allow me to sit there and watch you, you're wrong. You need to come back out. You need to move around aggressively out there and push me back. Mm -hmm. You want to get that standoff. So, I mean, that's a whole giant topic. Right. But you've got to be able to put your eyes out there, get your patrols out, get your LPOPs out there, um, communicate with them. There's, so you'll find that in all of these categories, they are all interconnected. Right. And that's because right. we just talked about security and health and, and, and communications and intelligence. Those are all part of the categories. Mm -hmm. But as they relate to security, it's all together. Mm -hmm. So think so, about the mission. So that's security. Coming up with. Uh, Number six here, number six, energy. Yep. You know, sometimes it gets overlooked, sometimes it gets uh, too much attention. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we we want everything to be powered because that's the way we live life. That's everything where we are lives, today. Everything yeah. lives off of a battery. Mm -hmm. At the same time, sometimes it gets neglected because of course the EMP is just gonna take everything out. So <laughs> why, <laughs> even, why even carry a battery? Because it's not gonna worry anyways. Right. Um, but energy is something that we have become accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And the, usually the more things that we can keep turned on, mm -hmm. the easier and more comfortable it is for us to do whatever we need to do. There's a, there's a phrase that I'll throw out there, you know, you roll your eyes. It's called graceful degradation. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. I'll keep my eyes in one location. I'll just <laughs> roll my head. So, so right now we, we are in this wonderful studio with, with some air conditioning. <laughs> we can turn it down. No. Gosh. <laughs> Being in front of the lights, Gosh, yeah, yeah. It, it's a you hard know, job. Glamorous life. So, but if the power goes out, we need to make up for that. Yeah. But I say that energy is probably one of the easiest things to live without, mm -hmm. because as a species, and you've heard me say it before, we didn't we didn't have it all the time. Yep. We yep. weren't born with it. So, if you plan to live without it, you're okay. If you want to create a generator system or a solar system or a windmill or a hydro you know, generator or whatever it is, that's fine. Actually, another shameless plug, the February issue is going to be on technology and survival. Yes. So we're going to talk about some of that. But uh, with that being said, I, I, energy is more important if you have a specific need. So if you've got somebody in the family that's on a piece of durable medical equipment, mm -hmm. a nebulizer, some sort of an oxygen machine, an electric wheelchair, you know, anything along those lines, that kind of stuff really needs to have power or you have to have you have to do the graceful degradation and fall back and say what's the manual version of that mm -hmm. and then prep that and then you be covered and yeah. then you could work without power but yeah and, and that's where kind of you know once again having that tiered approach of of you know a generator gas could run out at some sure. point uh, you know to, to solar but batteries you know being able to keep things going when when the sun is not up mm -hmm. um, you know there's multiple layers of approach and and it also scales a ton uh, batteries are usually heavy they are you can't put mm -hmm. a lot of them in a bug out bag yep. you know solar panels are heavy for the mm -hmm. most part you know yeah. yes we make small ones goal zero and things like that but they're they're heavy to get the amount of power that's needed to actually get to, to create yeah the, something the, that's useful because the load if your load yep. is too much for your system then that's not going to help you either right so you might be able to charge cell phones or you know a tablet with your survival library on should I do another shameless plug? Go for it. <laughs> That's also going to be in the tech, the tech issue in February, yeah. um, the digital survival library, how to do that. But that's fine. But if, if you're trying to run a power drill, mm -hmm. so do you remember years ago there was a TV show called The Colony where they actually put yes. them in the warehouse? Yes, all the different people. And yeah. they all came together and yeah. created this ad hoc survival group. And then the engineer tinkerer was always arguing, I can't do it. I need more power. And the other guy's like out there stealing stuff on a scavenging crew. Yeah. That's kind of how that works. If, if you get to that level of survival, you've got to 
you you need more power to run more tools. Uh -huh. So if your if your plan is to use your impact wrench, then you need to create the power to drive that wrench. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you're going to be using that drill for about 30 minutes every day, and then waiting for a 24 hours. Or, to, or to bring part of your plan is to keep your refrigerator running yeah. for insulin or something like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a huge draw. And that's a critical a piece of equipment. Uh -huh. You know, keeping insulin cold if you're on the kind that needs to be refrigerated. Right. So, so yeah, energy is something that, you know, you have to find that balance mm -hmm. between overboard, don't worry, I got 5,000 AA batteries, those are going to get burned through mm -hmm. pretty fast, too. Don't worry about it, the MP is going to wipe everything out. It's finding that balance that mm -hmm. really keeps, keeps comfortable. Um, and it makes a lot of these other categories easier. Mm -hmm. Communication is easier. Oh, much easier. When you have yeah. you know, transportation, yeah. things like yeah. that. You know, there's trying a, there's to, a trying lot to learn smoke things. signals you know, from scratch, right. <laughs> that's, that's so, harder. <laughs> so, nice little segue there <laughs> right into the next one. That's communication. right, communication. So communication is, is the base you know, of our existence mm -hmm. as teams. So in order for us to maximize our resources, you know, work on our divisions of labor and all the things that we have to do, we need to communicate. For effective leadership, you've got to communicate, right? So that's a whole nother section of, uh, I'm talking to you, I'm, we're, we're, move, we're reflective listening, that's communication. But communication also includes your radios. Mm -hmm. It includes your drop messages. It includes, you know, communicating the plan. So, you know, your route maps and all those kind of things. That's all, you know, your written documents. Mm -hmm. That's all communication. So look at communication as everything from how am I explaining the mission? Can I communicate effectively as a person, as a team? Can I communicate digitally or electronically? Yeah. Can I communicate by writing things down and, and being able to put those where somebody can find them or handing, handing you a strip map and you'd be able to read it? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and, and it's one of those things where, you know, I, I think the biggest part of communication is having multiple lines yeah. of communication, you know, and that's the biggest thing is you always got to make sure that you're um, relying, you know, you're not relying on, you know, a lot of people, I have, I have two ham radios, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Until you get to a place or a location or something where those ham radios can no longer reach each other. Sure. Then, then there's no longer. Or you don't know how to use them. Or you don't know how to use them. Or one or, of you doesn't know how to use it. You know, and, and a lot of it happens. Uh, it could be satellite phones. Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't matter if every, you know, cell tower in the area is knocked out, I'll still have satellite phones. As long as nothing happens to satellite. Mm -hmm. If anything happens, then that plan is Well, the interesting gone. thing is, if you really want to start thinking forward about, you know, potential impacts of, of war, the, the next war is going to initiate in space and cyber. So war will start, if, if Russia got antsy, or China got antsy, they would start with, you know, knocking out communications, mm -hmm. cyber attacking. You're, all of a sudden your bank card doesn't work or your power, your lights go off and you're like, what's going on? Well, it's an outage. Well, it might be the first salvo mm -hmm. of an attack. That's what happened in Ukraine. That's what happened, it, it's happened in Venezuela. It's happened in a number of countries that were, you know, were experimenting with cyber attacks, you know, as first strikes. Mm -hmm. so. so, you know, communication, it's in there. Make sure it's a part of your prep. Next one, transportation. Sure. Transportation is important, but that can include everything from your leather personnel carriers on the ends of your feet to ATVs, bicycles, horses, yep. cars, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles, yeah. whatever, or uh, improvised transportation, which, well, we just talked about in November <laughs> in the Survival Dispatch Insider. It's funny how these things keep coming up there. <laughs> because we are very thorough. I yeah. think that the, you know, the whole Insider thing, this is the benefit of this amazing program, is we talk about all kinds of stuff. Yep. And then we've already done all the research. Yeah. So, you know, and with transportation, I, I think there's a lot of middle steps that are left. Mm -hmm. We go from I drive my truck every day to it's a bug out situation, I'm on my feet. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of things in between you could do to make your life easier. A lot of things, yeah. you know. Uh, like put a fold up wagon in the back in your trunk. Right. Or a stroller. Car a baby stroller. Whatever. Baby stroller. Yeah. Uh, Bicycle. A a shopping cart would be a mm -hmm. godsend if you're on a flat road for mm -hmm. fifty miles. It would it would make your life mm -hmm. a whole lot easier. Um, you know, and so, so really make sure that you don't just go from prepare my vehicle to prepare my feet. There's, mm -hmm. there's multiple steps in there, yep. you know, that, that you can take also. Uh, and then the last one, number nine here, intelligence. Yes. So 
Intelligence is information about your situation. It's situational awareness, knowing what's going on around you, but intelligence before anything ever happens. Where do I live? What are my hazards in the area? What are my threats in the area? What are my natural and man-made you know, potential problems mm -hmm. I'm facing? Uh, where's that person live in the neighborhood whose kid always steals everybody's bicycle? You know, is you know, are, is there drug houses in the area? Is what are my routes? You know, have I designated my escape routes, my avenues of escape and avenues of approach? So, what's going on with those at all times? So, it's information coming in, and not all, not all, information is intelligence. Mm -hmm. A lot of information is just data coming in. Intelligence is after it's been analyzed and synthesized into something usable. Useful. And yep. then from the intelligence side of that is, okay, now I know what I know, but I also know what I don't know. And so I'm writing this book on area studies, and I actually use the Donald Rumsfeld quote. There are known knowns and there's known unknowns, but the unknown unknowns. So I want to know what those unknown unknowns are because it's, the things I don't know can hurt me. Mm -hmm. They can affect, I, I can create all these plans in the world, but if I'm not keeping myself informed about the peoples, the places, and the things in my area that could it disrupt those plans, then I could be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and like Charlie said, the intelligence goes well past, but it's also planning and documenting mm -hmm. once you have intelligence, you mm -hmm. know. We're talking, if, if your main evac route is over a bridge, mm -hmm. and something happens to that bridge, what? Is plan B an extra, you know, 20, right. 30 miles? Yeah, and critical to, to infrastructure get, is part of right. your planning, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a, that's part of the intelligence yeah. uh, of your area. So yeah, where is the next bridge? How far is that out? Do you have to drive 50 miles around just to get across the river? That right. happens in right. a lot of places. You know, in a lot of urban places, there's going to be multiple multiple bridges. Mm -hmm. But if a bridge goes out up in Alabama or out in North Carolina. A lot of times, you might have to go all the way up, you know, 20 miles and then across and 29 miles back. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's really, you know, that's why we put this together. Uh, nine areas of of that you really need to pay attention to and really need to map out exactly where you think your preps are within these nine. And like Charlie said, if you're covering these nine, there's a good chance that you're going to be able to sustain mm -hmm. almost any type of. Yeah. Whatever. If comes. you, if you, so you're saying I need to build a bug out bag, but I forget. So many people make so many lists on bug out bags, but if you write this down and you say, does my bug out bag have food? Okay. Does my bug out bag have water, or do I have a way to prepare water? Okay, I'm good. You know, do I have shelter in there? Mm -hmm. Well, where am I going? See these 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 single word lists like this create uh, thinking. It helps yeah. you with the critical thinking. So. I'm going to this kind of a place. What is my security level going to be? What kind of safety issues might I run into? Might I get ill? Might I need blisters, uh, blister moleskin or something like that for my bug out bag? Aha. So now I've addressed all. So just address all those. And once you ask yourself, if you're good with it, you're good with it. Yeah. That's all there is yeah, to it. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. So uh, we'll list the nine below just in case you guys forgot them or didn't write them down in time. Um, but we'll list the nine below in the description so you can check it out. And as Charlie said multiple times, you know, if you're looking for more information, be sure to check out the Survival Dispatch Insider. It's a monthly publication that we do. You can try a 14-day free trial. That link is in the description as well. Uh, if you got any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them below in the section. We usually hang around here for a couple of days. We'll make sure that we answer them. And also make sure you hit that like button and the notification button. It really helps us get the, our word out so that people can see it and we'd like to help people. So I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, be safe. <laughs>